Greetings, YouTube. As everyone in America knows, this week, one George Sodini walked into a woman's aerobics class, turned off the lights, and opened fire. He killed three, wounded nine, and then took his own life. My heart goes out to the families that he's destroyed, and to all the people whose lives have been irrevocably altered by this, both the wounded and those who just escaped from fr without harm at least physically, because he's taken away a sense of security that they will never get back. I pray that they can get the help they need to overcome this as best they can and move on. It's not going to be simple, but it can be done. I saw a report tonight on Headline News, and one of the talking heads was talking about the fact that this had nothing to do with mental health. And he's wrong. This has everything to do with mental health. So Dini didn't get the help he needed. If he had received the help he needed, three people wouldn't be dead, nine people wouldn't be shot, and there's the possibility that his life could have been salvaged. While I am a firm believer in redemption, I'm also a firm believer that if you get the right kind of help, that the least we could have done is lock him up so he didn't hurt anybody. Another problem I have is that people are referring to this man as a monster, and he's not. He's a human being, just like you and I. Now he's done something that most of us wouldn't do. He's done something that most of us wouldn't even think of doing. But that doesn't make him a monster. We cannot, as a society, demonize this man. Because if we do that, then we're going to spend all of our time looking for demons, and we aren't going to find them. Because the next Sodini is already out there, blending in with society because he or she is one of us. They aren't demons. Their eyes don't glow, they have no horns, they don't laugh maniacally if a kitten gets run over by a car. They're people. Frail, broken people and most of them can be helped, and the rest can just be locked away. But if we spend our time looking for demons, we're not going to find them. We're not going to have the opportunity to get them the help they need. I'm a firm believer that most people have mental issues they're not dealing with. I have sought therapy in the past for my own depression, and I am currently in the process of planning on returning to therapy, as I have a few issues I'd like to deal with. There's no shame in this. I don't go there because I'm broken. I go there because I need some help. I go there because I don't have the tools I need at this point in my life to get something fixed. So, I go to someone who has those tools so they can show me how I can use those tools to help myself. Now, I haven't been, in, 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 been to therapy in a decade because the tools I learned a decade worked well for me for a long time. But now I've encountered things I'm a different person, different situations, and now I need new tools. I need to add new tools to my toolbox so that in the future I will have the tools I learned 10 years ago and the ones I shall learn in the future. But Sodini didn't have those tools. I watched from his videos brief briefly. He had coping mechanisms. They were just failures. People who are self-harmers aren't trying to kill themselves, those are coping mechanisms. They're really crappy coping mechanisms, but it's a coping mechanism that keeps them alive. So he didn't have the right kind of coping mechanisms. From what I've seen, he was looking for a relationship, but a relationship completely on his own terms, which is completely unrealistic and impossible to achieve, so it's not surprising that he failed to, get, to, fail to find what he sought. If he had attempted to seek a relationship between one person and another person, he would have been much more successful. I mean, he wasn't Brad Pitt, but he wasn't hideous. He had a home, he had a steady job, he could have found someone if he wanted to. But he was looking for that perfect relationship on his terms and his terms alone, and that was never going to happen. So he externalized it to the ultimate degree. 
People have said he turned the lights off because he didn't want to see what, what he'd done. And I think that might have been part of it. But I also think he wanted to hide from the people he was shooting. Because even in his most demented, deranged fantasies, he knew, he knew on some level what he was doing was wrong, shameful, cowardly. So he hid from him from the, his victims, and he hid from what he did. And still at the end, he ended his own life. I'm so sorry for these women, the wounded, the dead, and all the rest. But we can't look for monsters here. We have to look for people so we can help find the next one before this happens.